because I want to give it a lighter edge. And also, they work for this. See you there. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilized conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown up way. Come and join me on Farage. I'm Colin Brazier. I've reported from more than 70 countries around the world, covered wars from Afghanistan to Iraq, from Lebanon to the Balkans. I'm trying to bring that experience, that feel for events, to the studio. And something else, I'm ready to give an opinion. Today's stories with a spark. Brazier from 8 p.m. weekdays on GB News. I'm Dominic Frisby, and in just a moment, it'll be time for Headliners, the show where we look at what's in tomorrow's papers. But first, the latest news. I'm Portalhurst. These are your latest news headlines. Millions of people have observed a two-minute silence this morning to remember the men and women who lost their lives in conflict. <laughs> That's a moment marked each year on the 11th hour of the 11th day on the 11th month. People across the UK pausing to honour those who died in war. As you saw there, the Duchess of Cornwall joining hundreds of veterans outside Westminster Abbey this morning. And this afternoon, it's been confirmed, Her Majesty the Queen will be attending the Remembrance Day service at the Cenotaph, which takes place on Sunday. In other news today on GB News, Border Force officers have intercepted at least 25 migrant boats attempting to cross the English Channel today alone, each boat carrying up to 50 people on board. It's been reported that four small boats have also made it to shore, landing at Deal Beach. There's been an influx of migrants trying to reach the UK in recent days, with 1,200 crossing the English Channel in the last 48 hours. A ninth person has died after the crowd crush at the Astro World Festival in Houston in Texas last week. And a warning, some flashing images coming up. 22-year-old college student Barty Shahani was described as a shining star in her community and was about to graduate from Texas University. Hundreds were injured in the crowd surge there as the rapper Travis Scott performed. A criminal investigation is ongoing. Yorkshire County Cricket Club has confirmed that its chief executive, Mark Arthur, has resigned. That follows a report that found the former Yorkshire player Azim Rafiq was the victim of racial harassment and bullying. The club's board say they're now looking for new leadership that will be vital in driving the change the club needs. A former Labour leader says we need to salvage what we can now from COP26 in Glasgow. The Shadow Secretary of State for Business, Ed Miliband, added, the reality is the conference won't deliver everything people had hoped for. However, the COP26 president, Alok Sharma, agreed time was running out, but talks were now focused on finding a way forward. We are still some way away from finalising those that are very critical issues which have been outstanding. And I, I don't think we can overemphasise how difficult this is. If it was easy, we would have resolved this over the past six years, but we haven't. Uh, and that's why, you know, I am ensuring that we use you know, every moment between now and the end of this COP to reach agreement. And London underground drivers have threatened to walk out later this month when London's night service is set to restart. The Rail and Transport Union said its members will stage a series of strikes in a dispute over staffing. Overnight services have been closed for more than 18 months because of the coronavirus pandemic. You are up to date. Thanks for watching. Now, let's go over to Headliners. Hello, 
and welcome to Headliners, the show in which so-called comedians look through tomorrow's papers, get behind the stories and give them a little wedgie. My name's Dominic Frisby, I'm your host tonight. I am a toxic white male, according to my ex-wife, and a non-essential worker, according to my agent. And before I introduce tonight's panellists, we start with today's headlines. And the Daily Mail has Charles' top aide quits over cash for honours scandal. Oops, it's not just MPs then. Uh, the Guardian leads with COP climate targets are too weak to avoid disaster. One wonders if COP26 is just politicians, the super rich, and those on the gravy train giving themselves a pat on the back while devising ways to make the rest of our lives worse. Belarus, meanwhile, is threatening to cut off gas supplies to Europe, if only we were self-reliant. The Telegraph has Russia may invade Ukraine. Tens of thousands of troops are massed on the Ukrainian border. The US has told the EU, WTF. The UK, meanwhile, say the French have surrendered to people traffickers. Not like the French to surrender. Metro leads with 999 calls crisis, ambulance service in meltdown as it tackles one million incidents in a month, heart attack and stroke victims having to wait nearly an hour for an ambulance because the system is so swamped. Maybe the solution is being able to get a GP appointment. The FT leads with a story about China's President Xi cementing his grip. He is now on a par with Chairman Mao, and a third five-year term is likely. His recent authoritarianism rejuvenating the nation, apparently, and there will be a new emphasis on socialism. Chilling words with chilling implications. But over here, we're too busy squabbling over whether can women can have penises or not to notice. There is also a story about Boris Johnson's four million quid of outside earnings opening him to accusations of hypocrisy from MPs. The Prime Minister a hypocrite, how dare they? And the Eye has an MP who told Marcus Rashford to concentrate on the day job, has second job, <laughs> lol. And the Mirror has Boris Johnson having to be told three times to put on, put on his mask in hospital. Naughty Boris. And there's also a little GB News story there in the top right-hand corner. The Times is leading with MPs fill pockets using rent expenses loophole. More dodgy dealing in this Britain that Boris says isn't corrupt. And finally, The Express has the Queen attending the Remembrance Day service and a special report on the NHS backlog. <laughs> So tonight I am joined by Timandra Harkness and Rona Cameron. Hello. Now, what is our first story? Let's start with the, the front page of tomorrow's mail. Charles Top Aid quits over cash for honours. Timandra, what is all this about? Well, this is uh, a, another scandal of, uh, would you call it corruption? Certainly it's another cash for honours scandal. But in this case, it is involving the royal family, uh, which you can understand they want to distance themselves from. So it's it, Charles's top aide, uh, Michael Fawcett, who's been with him for a long, long time. He relies on him. He's served various roles for the Prince of Wales. Uh, but he was head of the Prince's Foundation, which is kind of charitable trust, obviously, that did various things like do up stately homes in Scotland to use for charitable and community activities. And as part of that, he was a great fundraiser and he managed to raise some very generous donations from a Saudi billionaire, Mahfouz Mare Mubarak bin Mahfouz. Well done. Who had donated <laughs> one and a half million pounds, mainly used for doing at these Scottish country homes for uh, charitable purposes. Uh, some other grounds apparently named after him. And it also uh, received an honorary CBE for, personally from the prince. And, uh, and the questions were raised about this, was is this basically give us enough money and you can have a CBE? And after uh, various questions about this, he's resigned. Michael Fawcett has resigned. He's said to be heartbroken over the whole thing. But you can understand that in the wake of a number of scandals about cash for honours and corruption, that they obviously felt this, it was all getting too embarrassing for the royal family and, uh, and he would have to go. Tough. 
But uh, what, are, what, what do we? The who's fair. the bad guy here? It, I, mean, I think look, I mean, it's, it's we, a minefield, isn't it? People have been selling on us for thousands of years. <laughs> That's, that isn't that probably what they were invented for. You were originally. <laughs> precisely. But but it's also it's it's I I think it probably is a bit of a minefield where you want people to make massive donations to you, and clearly part of the appeal for Saudi billionaires is that you become associated with the British royal family, mm. and. At what point does that slide into actual corruption and getting a CBE, which is, I mean, it's basically symbolic honour, isn't it? It's not like getting a seat in the House of Lords. I mean, we're just yeah. used to it all now. It's just every single day, isn't it? I Have mean... you got a CBE yet? No. I got all my badges at the guides. Well, I, th I think you should have a CBE my, uh, just for that. Farmer's badge, which was really? quite unusual at the time. Did you have to run a whole farm? <laughs> a pig farm, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that is easily the most impressive thing I've ever heard. badge as well. What does that mean, though? They said to make some tea for old people. I got my uh, bronze swimming medallion Did you? when I was at school. I was Listen, very I think this is a, a sacrificial lamb. I think they've done a little establishment distraction, right? Because the Tories, they, they, they never, you know, they never fall, ever. Really? No. So you think they're like... They're, yeah, I think they're they've had a week pushing the spotlight the over yeah. to and I think Prince maybe Charles. They'll, 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 maybe they'll just not remember what else is going on and this guy can go... I think it's just a sacrificial Have lie. you been spending too much time in the dark recesses of the internet with, with unsavoury types, <laughs> putting these unpalatable ideas in your head? I'm actually in a state of shock because I never thought I'd actually have to wear these glasses in a dual situation of reading and looking at people because I looking at you only when I'm looking down. I never I never thought I'd always thought I'd be doing I thought the, we were bonding. I thought, I thought we were looking at juggle. each other and bonding. I thought I'd be doing the juggle, but I've found myself well, for the you... first time since I've owned them. To, to be fair, I think you're better off having the papers in focus and me a bit blurry. Yeah, I, I always so. look the best I look in the day is first thing in the morning before I put my contact lenses in. I don't know what they do to my face, but I look way better just before I wear them. <laughs> right, next we have another story in the mail. This one is about Boris Johnson at COP26. Oh, Rona. Really? What, I mean, what can we say about this... this farce, you know, this sort of just meeting up of all the most expensive planes in the world in Glasgow whilst people are sleeping at Euston Station, delegates sleeping at Euston Station because they couldn't get there. And, I mean, it's... It's traumatic. I mean, people are going to have to... There's going to have to be counselling handed out to a lot of the delegates who've had to to stay in places outside of Glasgow, I fear, not not such savoury <laughs> places. But, look, this whole situation <laughs> is, is... Have I you mean, stayed in any of these places? I don't... I, don't th I can't take it seriously. I keep... I well, personally, for me, it feels like it... Well, I suppose I feel a bit like... David Cameron did, you know, just before Brexit. He kind of thought somebody, someone's going to step in and it's not going to happen. That's what I thought. About climate change? Well, with Brexit, you know, I said it's not going to happen. Someone, someone's going to step in. This can't happen, is what I was hoping for. But I, and I, I'm, I'm hoping the same now. How can it be 48 hours left to secure a deal? How can it be that new analysis has told us that the, the climate is heated up by 2.5. I mean, it's insane. What? Why? You know, when I was a little girl, when I was a little girl, right, I, I used to think, obviously, very simplistically about the world, but I, I, I was very concerned about the plight of humanity at a very young age. And I used to, <clears throat> I used to think, I don't understand. If there's a nuclear war, I was worried about nuclear war when I was young, right? I used to think, I, I don't I understand. How, yeah, because in the 80s, there was a lot of fear about that and the Cold War. And I had everything. sleepless I think, nights about it. And I did, yeah, remember the it was snowman like and things like that. Living through the Cuban Missile Crisis, mm. our, our generation, right? So I used to think, I don't understand. The people that create the situation which leads to a war, they'll get protected in the event of a war. But then we'll have to start over again and all the innocent people will be killed and the people that created it will be alive. And I used, to, I used to be perplexed with this conundrum. And I feel it's the same with climate change. You've got guys like Bezos there... Flying in with their private jets. Yeah, but he's already jets. investigating space, presumably not just for monetary gains, but as some kind of... He always wanted to go, and now he's got the cash. Holiday. Yeah. And, Holiday him on Mars. You know, you know some days you, it just goes over your head, and other days you, you, you think, hang on... 
Are we really living in a world where just members of the public are delivering packages? <laughs> you know, like retired couples <laughs> for all Jeff around Bezos. the world in, in <laughs> vans, OK? Uh, emissions connected with vans. And the guy that owns a company is securing... Is flying in in his $70 million jet to a climate change conference. It just doesn't conference. seem real. I, I, I just don't... I don't feel it's real and, and I can't take it seriously. I, I, Someone, well, someone's going to step in. The grown-ups are going to step in, right? I, I wonder, when it's said, the, the new thing is that uh, consultants Arab have said, well, actually, COP26 is going to emit over 100,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, is, is that a lot? So That's apparently, coming out of their mouths. Apparently, the, the global <laughs> average per head is 4.8 tonnes per person. So that's mm. like... It was, well, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of... of 50,000 people, whatever it is. Is it two two thousand people's worth of annual emissions just in, for this COP twenty six? Yeah. So I thought maybe the way to save the planet is to stop having <laughs> these annual yeah. things that emit hundred thousand self, tons. Like a, a self, if you cut out those and all the TV programmes made by David Attenborough, which must cost like carbon to make and carbon to watch, so there's no more no more nature programmes and all the political intervention and the waste and, that causes. Yeah, and and no more no more books about how to live a greener life, then I reckon we could probably save enough carbon to actually keep keep global warming. I am idea. with you. you be in if we eliminate hypocrisy, we eliminate the climate risk. I think if you eliminate hypocrisy, <laughs> we will. Everyone on Earth will vanish in a puff of smoke. But I take your general and point. And so we solve climate for <laughs> to change. Um, now our next story is in the Metro, and it's about Tory MPs giving jobs to their family members. Could this? tarnish the Tories' reputation for spotless <laughs> integrity. to Andra. I, I suspect that's one thing that will be met with a, a wave of sympathy and indifference, because I bet most people in the country, if you said to them, uh, would you employ a family member in your business, the only reason they would say no would be because they hate their family or they think they're useless. Mm. I actually think that most, most self-employed people, I think, who have family are quite prepared to, like, pay their other half to do the admin or whatever. Yeah. And so I actually... I think of all the corrupt things, this is probably the, the least, least... corrupt. The least yeah, worried. I mean, the fam I'm, I'm on your thing. side, the family business. I mean, mm. you know, yeah. and, and I get I mean, my at, kids to do Look at the Queen. Me, my... Who does she have in her business, right? <laughs> She's got her kids, her grandkids. I mean, you know, that's that's entire family business, and nobody, nobody bats an eyelid over that. It's actually, interestingly, they have already been told they have to stop doing it. The Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority... Uh, sorry, the, the actual story is over one in eight MPs employed a family member in the last year, so that's 86 out of the, the MPs. Mm. But it, in 2017, the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority said you can't, actually, you can't hire connected parties, which is the horrible legalistic term for family members. So you can't actually hire mm. family members anymore since 2017. But those already employed were allowed to keep their jobs. Oh, I see. Yeah. I just... I employ family members because they're the only people I trust. Are you, surely well, you're How getting... about disconnected members, which sums up most families? <laughs> well, exactly. I say most families, I think. Yeah, I need yeah. staff. I uh, need staff. Are you outsourcing time. your writing material to your family members? or? <laughs> Well, well, they are the source of my writing <laughs> too. About the trauma of my family background. Um, no, I, um, I absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm from a generation of LGBTQMZ people who um, made other people their family. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, yeah. you move to a big city, you make other people your family, and so yeah, the people in my life I'd considered to be my family have a slight carer role, I'll be honest. I need people to put up blackout for but me. But do you actually pay them for it or do they just do it because they love you? They were just bad in another life. <laughs> OK, coming up, we continue to look through tomorrow's papers, but first, the weather. Evening, a lively Friday ahead tomorrow. Fairly gusty conditions, most places seeing a few showers, some places having a, a pretty soggy day, but some spots seeing a bit of sunshine as well. It's all courtesy of this area of low pressure that's moving in, ousting a little ridge of high pressure. These weather fronts bringing bands of rain overnight and the isobars squidging together, which is why the winds will be steadily picking up for most overnight.
It's still pretty fine out there this evening across much of eastern England, but patchy rain for Wales, some heavy bursts of rain for Scotland and Northern Ireland, and uh, those winds continuing to strengthen. That all adds up to a pretty mild night as well. Early in the evening, we could drop uh, down to single figures across parts of the east, but by dawn, most towns and cities will be at double digits. Most will start grey, though, without breaks of rain. Certainly for a good part of Scotland, some heavy rain here. The rain should ease from Northern Ireland, but quite a wet day for parts of Northwest England, North and Mid Wales. Showers across the south, but uh, a good part of the day here will be dry. We should see some sunny spells, lifting the temperatures maybe to 15 degrees, generally 12 to 14, but feeling cooler because it will be quite blustery, quite boisterous, particularly when the showers come along. Plenty more of those showers around through Friday evening as well, but they do gradually tend to fade, so it's turning drier as we head into the weekend. Clearer skies across northern Britain will allow a, a cooler start to Saturday. Still a bit of a breeze early on, quite a fresh breeze at times along those North Sea coasts, but generally a much calmer day on Saturday with um, sunny spells for parts of Scotland, northern England. Further south and west, quite a lot of cloud. A bit of drizzle is possible through parts of Northern Ireland. Temperatures still mostly around or a touch above average, and the winds will be lighter on Saturday, so it'll probably feel a little milder. Mostly light winds on Sunday could allow some fog to form. Fairly cloudy skies, but again, most places will be dry and bright. Goodbye. You're watching GB News live across the UK and the world on our digital stream. GB News is Britain's news channel. We are the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. We are here for you. Don't forget to join our YouTube community by clicking on that subscribe button. And if you want the GB News app, you can click and catch up on programmes anytime. We love to hear from you, so email us. GBviews at gbnews.uk Thanks for being part of the GB News family. My name is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate. And I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilized conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. I'm Colin Brazier. I've reported from more than 70 countries around the world, covered wars from Afghanistan to Iraq, from Lebanon to the Balkans. I'm trying to bring that experience, that feel for events, to the studio. And something else, I'm ready to give an opinion. Today's stories with a spark. Brazier from 8 p.m. weekdays on GB News. Hello and welcome back to Headliners. Tonight I'm joined by mathematician and statistician Tamandra Harkness and by writer, painter and former football player Rona Cameron. I was doing a swim. So ah, yeah. were you? Sorry. We discussed it earlier. We did discuss it did. earlier, but then you, then you, you were going on more about football than you were about <laughs> swimming, so I thought oh, I'd, I'd well, big that particular know. one up. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now, uh, Leaving aside the football and the swimming, you've got a story for us, a rather nasty... Well, yeah, I don't know well, if it's nasty, it's, it's a something it's story. Troubling. A, a, a troubling story, thank Deeply you. Deeply troubling. About uh, care homes, and that's from the Daily Mail. Bring the tone down a bit, because, you know, one feels incredibly guilty even trying to be at all loose or light about this story, you know, but sometimes for financial reasons, you know, we're forced to Here be slightly trite and banal and funny. So... Um, this is this is very worrying, right? They've so got to pay me a lot of money to be trite, over, banal, and funny. <laughs> over, overnight, fifty-seven thousand care home staff have literally had to leave because of uh, 
the they haven't new... had to leave. They've been sacked. Yeah, they've been sacked. Well, forced to leave, sacked. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, forced right. to leave, sacked. I was trying to use more hardcore because they haven't uh, language. they haven't got their um, vaccine sorted out. They haven't. I don't understand. The people are refusing to get vaccinated. Um, and this particular story relates to a care home in Birmingham where the, uh, the manager there, um, Teresa, has, has, she said she's seen scenes of like, you know, carers and old people, you know, like crying and in people's arms knowing that it's their last day of work. But they, they are still refusing to get vaccines and it's been made, you know, is a no jab, no job policy now. It's, it's absolutely compulsory. I don't understand all the reasons for not getting the vaccine. I didn't want the vaccine. I don't want. I don't agree, sort of, on a physiological level. I know quite a bit about uh, about my body and about medicine. It's not a great thing to have in your body, but you weigh up the situation. <laughs> yeah, I and say. And you it. take the vaccine. I don't understand why people are not. That's the thing I'm utterly perplexed but about. This. Let me ask you a question because I, I, I can do. see all sorts of reasons. I like questions. <laughs> I can see all sorts of reasons why people might not want to take. They might have had the virus already. And so they've got they immunity, younger, and they or they might be younger, or yeah. they might have had be you know someone who's had the vaccine, been or taken pregnant. very ill, or, or pregnant. You know, there's a million different reasons. Mm. Do you support this no jab, no job? I mean, the law was changed, and Are they were asking me to put myself on the line on I am. television. I'm, I... <laughs> but it's only England. I want strong so... opinions, and well, I want to know which side of the divide. You won't make any new enemies in Scotland yes. by your opinions. Yeah, no, they wouldn't do that in Scotland. No. You're kidding me. They're way more pro-vax in Scotland. They haven't. They, yeah, this is only in England, though. This regulation. Yeah. Pro okay, I, I accept that. I accept yeah. that. But I'm surprised Scotland will have already done and it. And why do you think they're more pro-vax in Scotland? Because I think Scots have slightly more respect for the government yes. and law and order. And lots of old people and, being told. And a lot what of old people and being told what to do. And mm. I think the same. Like it's in London, more conformist. You, I think there's yeah, slightly it's more, more homogenous, you. smaller. You go homogenous to London and everyone's like, well. oh, whatever. You know, nobody yeah, believes younger... anything they're told. And younger, and and um, yeah. So you, so I mean, are you a no jab, no jobber, or do you just think? Uh, look, you know, I have if you haven't to got say, the vaccine, no, no, what's the no, I believe if you're working with people in a in a field of health. Um, particularly the elderly, I just think it makes absolutely no sense for whatever reason not to have the jab. This is a heartbreaking story, and my heart goes out to all. But what if you, the what if you, what if you, uh, the, the, va the, va the vax doesn't make you any less contagious? Well, it does make you a bit less contagious. That, this Are you sure thing, about that? Yeah, well, it's, yes. this, is, this is the problem. It's, if, if it was, like, 100% protection, just get the jab, and you can't possibly pass it on, then I think it would be much more clear-cut. But it reduces your chances of catching and passing it on, so it does protect the people you're working with. OK. But I just, I just think that the way, the way to get people to get vaccinated is to persuade them, mm. is to talk to them, is to say, look, you know, for you, it's not a big risk to get vaccinated. Even if you're young and the, and the illness isn't a big risk to yes, you, I you think are it's protecting about the people you work with. Communication. Uh, and, you know, and if you have particular worries, let's hear them, let's talk about it. And a lot of care home, people running care homes are saying, we were doing this, it was working. 90% of care mm -hmm. home workers are vaccinated. What you've done now is just yeah. massive exodus of workers. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like 5 to 10% of the workforce. It's and it's, the interesting question is, will the reduced workforce... Uh, lead to more deaths than just leaving things as they were? Yeah. That's a question we will never know the answer to. To the Times now, and a story about thousands of far-right protesters marching through Warsaw. Now, when you see the word far-right in the media, it's yep. difficult to know what, what, they, what the media means when they say far-right these days. I mean, it couldn't just mean they don't read The Guardian. Um, but, Tamandra, what's this story now, about? No, I think, I think in Poland it, it does mean... I mean, they're ultra-nationalists, basically. Uh, there's, there's a rather strange wording in the story which, which says it's an annual... It's an annual march, and uh, and it's described as something like Europe's biggest annual far right march. Like, <laughs> like it's kind of like, hey, it's the biggest pride <laughs> festival in Europe. No, it's Europe's biggest <laughs> annual far right, right march. march. Uh, and it, it's an escalation of the the thing with the border with Belarus, where Belarus are encouraging lots of. Uh, 
migrants from outside Europe to come to them to try and go into the EU through the border with Poland. Which Why is... Belarus? You say Belarus, I say Belarus. Oh, OK, Belarus, Belarus. Um, I'm called Tamandra, I'm saying nothing. Uh, right. And, and the, it's an escalation of this. So apparently it's an annual march by Polish nationalists, but it's obviously escalating the whole thing. But it, it, the whole business is really escalating. Belarus backed by Moscow and Poland kind of backed by the EU, although Obviously, there's already some friction between the Polish nationalists, especially, and the EU. I think we can see that the far right, yes. the Polish far right, yeah, air, there they are, looking and like mm. many of them just like country gents. Well, it's it nice looking like hats. yeah, just looking like ordinary people who think that yeah, that's me who want Things Polish nationalism. Um, and but but there's, there's also there's a gas pipeline that delivers gas from Russia to Europe, Poland, Germany other European countries that goes through Belarus so and now time. Lukashenko is talking about turning that off if if Poland and the EU don't play ball so it's basically an escalation of all sorts of things I can't take on Belarus it's too much with everything else I just yeah. well when you look at the fact and then Russia the, you know Belarus and Russia are pretty tight and then there's the Russian army on the borders of the Ukraine I mean it's all yeah it's, yeah it's yeah it's all connected to this so on. yeah Lukashenko is now talking about uh, oh, some of these migrants are Kurds and they're warrior people and they have weapons brought in from the Russian bits of Crimea, which formerly part of the Ukraine. Uh, and, then, and then there's an amazing quote from the Belarusian state media, whipping up anti-Polish sentiment, says the, the, the article, quoting, you are playing with fire. You organise this crisis. This is humanitarian catastrophe. America will not fight for you. Did 1939 teach you nothing? Uh, so it's all it's all getting a bit nasty Eating. and serious, yeah. Right. And, and we can only hope that it's a lot of posing and is not actually going to turn into a fighting war. We can only hope. Now, Rona, you've got a story in the Times about yes. uh, women working. Rather from perplexing home. this one. I don't quite understand it myself. I'm going to be honest. Well, women who work remotely um, could damage their careers. Say, the Bank of England's Catherine Mann. Okay. On a Zoom call. <laughs> Women who stay away from the office risk their careers suffering as more staff return to the workplace after the pandemic, right? Um, the spontaneous conversations they're trying to say that took place in the office are hard to replicate via virtual methods. And Such this is texting. about, I don't understand, what's this to do with women? Yeah, I don't understand. Do you, I, I, you see what I mean? I read the article and I didn't get no. it. Are more men going to work than women? Yes. Is that what it is? Yes. yes. No surprise, a greater proportion of women than men over 50, that's everyone knackered by menopause like me, want to stay at home for the rest of their lives. <laughs> That's, that, that is that literally what it says? Five years ago, and this Have is you... the only time I've ever been out. So, this is literally... are you basically working from home? Well, I've been working at home for decades. Oh, okay. Apart from what I used to do at night, but go to clubs. But yeah, I've always been indoors. I realised that I've been hiding for pretty much since I left school. Is it good yeah. to get out? No. <laughs> it's oh. everything I thought it would be. No, well, actually, it is. <laughs> no, it is. It is. It is nice. It's nice to to meet some some charming, lovely, talk to human <laughs> beings, lovely people. Yeah, it is. But um, I can see why why women over fifty. But the men, men over fifty, are more inclined to want to go to back go to the office. office. Is that but also, the woman staying at home? What do you what do you think that <laughs> what do you think that says about the traditional? Well, possibly that their careers were already mm. more important to them and. So they, they continue to go in the office because well, they want to push their careers. Aren't they? The men are hunter gatherers, aren't they? But although it is interesting oh, that I, I think. I thought the men were the hunters and the women were the gatherers. Hmm. Yes. But, but there's a bit of a split age wise yeah. with there. staying at home that the. They were saying during the lockdowns that the older people who had basically houses and puppies uh -huh. and a bit of space in an office were quite keen to keep working from home uh, and then the younger people who are living in shared houses and trying to basically do all their work perched on the end of their bed with their laptop and their shared wi-fi were actually quite keen to go back into the office but i think but i think the childcare thing is also a big factor because of course when everyone was working from home people could share the childcare yeah. quite well right uh, and now it's, it seems to be saying that actually, yeah, the men are going back to work more and the women are at home going, well, the childcare is still a bit disrupted uh, and somebody's <laughs> got to look after the kids. So is that, oh, that's me then, is it?
Talk about the kids. Uh, Richie Sunak is, uh, he's very worried that younger people, I know obviously older than the children you were talking about, uh, are missing out on developing working relationships and building the skills that they would have if they returned to the office. Because younger people not have the skills that we've had. Yeah, well, they don't. They don't have the direct experience. And charm, exactly. you know, that kind of jokey stuff our generation does, that's yes. perceived as mental illness by the young yeah. men. Or sexual <laughs> harassment. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're, yeah, they're not going to be developed. I mean, I I predict that in the future, younger people have an empathy app on their phone. What well, tell them what face they should yeah, be and making? They'll, they'll pay to go and eat an apple under a tree. It does. It it will buzz them every time they have to yeah. nod. I fear that's on the verge of happening. I think you're right. I think. Yeah, I no, I do think that's right. About you need to go into the office for the interaction and the like, yeah, the, so the, the things you learn to suffer more when there are those. Dramatic uh, changes. Coming up, more from the inside pages of tomorrow's newspapers, including some title changes for our favourite royals. Don't go away. You're watching GB News live across the UK and the world on our digital stream. GB News is Britain's news channel. We are the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. We are here for you. Don't forget to join our YouTube community by clicking on that subscribe button. And if you want the GB News app, you can click and catch up on programmes anytime. We love to hear from you, so email us. GBviews at gbnews.uk Thanks for being part of the GB News family. My name is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate. And I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilized conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. I'm Colin Brazier. I've reported from more than 70 countries around the world, covered wars from Afghanistan to Iraq, from Lebanon to the Balkans. I'm trying to bring that experience, that feel for events, to the studio. And something else, I'm ready to give an opinion. Today's stories with a spark. Brazier from 8 p.m. weekdays on GB News. Hello and welcome back to Headliners. We're looking at uh, tomorrow's papers, looking at some of the stories. I'm joined by Tamandra Harkness and swimmer Rona Cameron. And uh, Rona, <laughs> what, what are we going to look at next? What's your next story for us? Um, I'm not too worried about this one. The care home thing was, was terribly troubling. But this one I'm not so worried about because it's about essentially baby boomers who are the most annoying people on the planet. So the over 60s face a ban from Europe, OK, unless NHS app shows the COVID booster jab. No surprises to learn that there has been a cock up with the app showing the booster as so, well yeah. as the vaccines. And this could mean that people over 60 are going to find it hard. That word hard. The baby boomers are going to find something hard. Now, <laughs> brace yourself, this may be, this is going to be challenging for them, right? With their cheap housing and good pensions and, you know, everything else. The list is endless. Um, they all book a the free bus pass for everyone. Oh, it's, the list is endless. Best music of their era, everything. So they, they, they might not be able to go to certain parts of Europe. I bet you Europe's going to be uh, delighted because they hate our guts now anyway. So no skin off their nose. Um, not all of them. Unless that most of them, most no, of the sensible no, no. ones. <laughs> well, not if you've got a Scottish accent, you're OK. Hmm. Um, 
Unless the government urgently changes the setting of the NHS app to show a record of booster jabs. 10 million people who have received a booster jab in the UK have been surprised to find out that it's not recorded in the COVID pass within the NHS. Well, that's not like a, NHS, have, I said. I NHS, think. I didn't more mean like. That, that was <laughs> Ofcom. Hold, hold your horses. That was just a slip of the tongue. <laughs> really? So, Andrew, it's not like a, a government eye ski. IT scheme to, <laughs> to go wrong. <laughs> to go wrong. Well, I, I I did look at this and go, well, that'll teach you to download the app, frankly, because I no. If you want to go fair. around with an app on your phone, with the you have to show people your medical records, then uh, no. more for you. I I've think. only got a tied app. I I, I sent off for my letter from the NHS saying you have been vaccinated. Um, although of course I did then take a photo of it on my phone, so I still show people. But anyway. Yeah, but they don't. Uh, yeah, well, it's. It's interesting because on this, I think the UK is a little bit more relaxed than a lot of Europe. Because I mean, one of the stories is after December the 15th, France has said that people over 65 will have to have proof of a booster jab to be allowed to take an intercity yep. train or enter a restaurant. restaurant yeah. I mean, keeping French people out of restaurants <laughs> is yeah. is akin to a, a civil liberty, really. Um, and they're but talking they're about saying, doing it... Sajid Javid refused to rule out doing it here yesterday. They well, this is another reason to not have the NHS out. But, but at the moment, they're actually being a little bit more relaxed here and saying yeah. over 65s are allowed to leave the house and go out without showing their medical records to whoever asks. Which, uh, yeah. And long may, we, long may we stick with that, frankly. Yeah. So, yeah. Sad though I am that there will be more bureaucracy for over 60s needing to travel around Europe and go into restaurants. Well, they need to suffer a bit. I don't want any real harm to come to anyone in I, any age group. I just think you've got this cruel streak, but I'd this, like... this loathing of the poor I just don't like. Room. I just think that Generation X are just the crappiest... Gen I mean, we don't need to worry about any of the future issues, the, the issues affecting our future that we've discussed tonight, because we're all, we're all dead by the time we're about 64. We all get cancer from all the cigarette smoking no, asbestos. They all want to leave a better world than they found. Now, <laughs> a story now from tomorrow's Daily Star. Royal family members are in line for title changes, for example. Prince William is currently the Duke of Cambridge, but will one day inherit the title Prince of Wales. Prince George of Cambridge will become Prince George of Wales. And I suppose Meghan Markle, Duchess of Sussex, will eventually become uh, known as that irksome actor woman from Suits. Rona, any more details here? Ah, oh, well, um, yes. Didn't realise I was covering this. <laughs> Let me <laughs> improvise. Tamandra, can you bail us out? Uh, well, <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's, a, it's an incredibly detailed story. It does seem to me a list of all the titles that they have now and what they could become in the future. The weirdest one being the, when William is married, he becomes the Prince of Wales and Kate Middleton... I know yeah. I've got a real soft spot for Kate and William, by Have the you? way. It's like my guilty pleasure. I'm Is it not like a, a little little love thing. I just I can't help it. I just I'm not I'm not a royalist. A baby the dad's a baby boomer. I'm not a, I'm not a yeah. royalist. I just I just kind of think they're they're nice. Just they are. They're, they're doing decent. a good job. I think they're decent. I, th I think Harry's decent as well, but I think they're I think they're decent. But anyway, uh, she'll become the Princess of Wales. Yeah. Like his yeah. mother, yeah. which is like it's very Freudian, isn't it? It's but that's kind of how the royal family works. Yes, I know. But when it's you like, think about it, and then Charles would become king. Just, but when you put it <laughs> like that, like what? Starkly. Well, yeah, but it must be, but it must be kind of weird anyway to be a royal. Mm. I mean, you know, as a Republican, I actually think they should randomise who gets what titles, or, or you know, let us like all choose our titles. Our yeah, so that so that you know, you out. could be the Duchess of Rothsay. For example, um, I'd like to have a more gender neutral title. I wouldn't be okay. a duchess. I, I could be a duke. How about a dux? Like Latin, you know, dux. Yeah, it's like I'm a mastress. Mastress. My dog, in my dog ownership. I'm okay. not a master. I'm going to be a baron. Mastress. Right, another... Baron is great. Baron I of like where? Baron. Baron, baron. baron. You know, it's got sort of European say? connotations. Baron Frisbee very sophisticated. I can't even get... Broccoli. I can't even baron get... Of broccoli. Baron of broccoli. Yes. Oh, I can't even yeah. get miss taken off my bank card. The nationwide won't allow it. I, don't, really? I, I tried professor, doctor, but I, I have. They will not take miss off it. Another royal story here from the Daily Star: a Prince Harry look-alike. Oh. The only way you can tell, apparently, that he isn't Prince Harry is because <laughs> he stands up to his wife. Oh. Rona has more. <laughs> 
Or maybe he's just really, really in love with his wife. The Prince Harry look alike or Prince Harry? Real oh. Prince Harry. Yeah. Because he had a really traumatic event in his childhood that he never recovered from. Mm. And this is the first time that he has felt true connection and love. And his intense feelings and therefore all the decision he makes is a mirror of this. How you, about that? You, uh, it's a beautiful yeah? thing. It's beautiful to Isn't hear. Isn't it? But we're reviewing yeah, the story in the Yeah, I cannot believe papers. there's we a Prince about Harry look -alike. look -alike. We, OK. <laughs> Okay. So, of course, this guy, Riss, Riss, Rise, Riss, right? Reese. Reese, Reese, yeah, that'll do. Um, he's also worn Union Jack Speedos. I'd, uh, have we seen. In, in a royal the family Jack? themed hot yep. tub. A royal family themed hot tub. I want to know, what tub. does a royal family themed hot tub We might tub see look it, like? and I'm very excited about We're looking about at a picture of him on the screen Spencer, there. He looks like which a ginger just Nick Dixon. <laughs> so. <laughs> He's met. Guess what? What do you think's happened to him on this journey? Has it's he pretty fallen predictable. in love with? Not quite, but he oh. has paired up with a Meghan Markle lookalike, Sarah Malanga from Manchester. Oh. Yeah, he would. So he's yeah. had, he's been he's he got discovered and he's having this great fantastic life as as Prince Harry. Um, but when the work gets quieter um, and busier, depending on how much he, Harry's in the news. Um, He's often working two gigs a day wow. in the, the run-up to, kind of, to big events. What, what do you think he charges? Like they don't say what he charges. Well, you do, I mean, you don't got to advertise that, are they? You have to ring his agent to find that out. Two grand. But listen, I used he to look like I could do Tony Blair <laughs> when I was younger, but that's why I've grown this beard. But when I've shaved the beard, <laughs> but he, like he lives Tony in Blair this sort of parallel <laughs> universe of lookalikes. I know it must yeah. be weird. And he's flown all round the world, and he um, he's rubbed shoulders with. Adele tribute acts. Oh, so he's yeah. in this lookalike universe. So do you think this... there's a kind of a parallel like hierarchy of who's most famous and important I amongst do. the lookalikes? Almost certainly. This is from the mirror now. I just <laughs> want like... to say that Andrew lookalike. He's You're not very doing bossy. so well. <laughs> no, he's I've not. He's just been alone a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's not, so that was a funny joke and he deserved more. Thank you. Uh, I took the decision yeah, to just You do know that. you were right to say I it and then the I decision. talked over. You... I knew you'd respect. Yeah. I, 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 I... I take my hat off you for doing that. Go on. This is from the mirror now. A lucky Brit has claimed the 11 million national lottery jackpot two weeks after the draw. And it's not clear why there was a two week delay, <laughs> though hypothetically that is enough time to kidnap someone, get them to give up their lottery ticket, then bury them in the woods though I doubt that happened. They probably just threw them in a lake. Samandra. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't have anything nearly that sinister in mind. I was just assuming they, they were like... Got like to yeah, like, the like me, where you go, oh, oh, did I buy lottery tickets? And then looked at the numbers, and there they were. But I have to say, I think the only reason this is news at all is that there was this two-week delay, and presumably yes. people were, were starting to go, well, I could use 11 million. <laughs> Well, why isn't it me? But, I mean, what can you do with 11 million? I mean, it's, that's like a, a, what, a seventh of a Jeff Bezos private jet. Mm. Yeah, it sort of feels rather pathetic. I, wrote, I, I once wrote a, a play in the 90s about a guy who won the lottery and bought Matt Letissier, the football player, for his <laughs> park side. <laughs> And so in those days, when you won the lottery, you could you could yeah. buy a football player. But oh, 11 no. million doesn't no. even get you, you, you know, Gary Stevens. Week. But you might get like a football player's <laughs> look-alike. You could even probably get you a book Scottish goalie. Matt Letizia's <laughs> double for your birthday party, maybe. Yeah, uh, that would that's, that would that's where you resorted to. Good callback. Yeah. Um, Tamandra, you've got a story about, or is this you, or maybe it's Rona, me. who's got a story about Uber, Uber price, yeah, that's price me. rises in the uh, next Yeah, round. Uber price the rises. The decline of the once great Uber. Is it a decline? I mean, it depends well, on which side you're looking at it. I mean, well, if I'm you're looking at it as a customer. If you're a customer, you're going, what? I can't get a car, and now the prices have gone up by 10% in London. But if you're a driver, it's, it's not looking bad. First of all, Supreme Court rules that you are actually an employee and therefore you should get things like holiday pay and sick pay. Uh, we know nothing of these things, obviously, <laughs> as freelancers, but I have heard that they're a good thing. A national living wage, all pretty good if you're trying to live. Uh, and now their prices have gone up by 10%, which will presumably make it more of a workable option for the drivers. Uh, and they've also they've recognised the GMB as a union for the drivers. So I think from the driver's point of view, it's actually looking better. Yeah. But, you, you know, you can no longer 
get driven all the way home at any hour for some ridiculously cheap amount of money in exchange for all data and constant surveillance of where your phone is at any given time which is the reason I don't use Uber. It's not mm. actually because I care about the drivers, it's because I don't want Uber to track me Some everywhere I go. Some of my Bitcoin mates say the same thing. They know where you live. What is, well, well, they know where you live, but they, they actually know where you are, even when you're not in an Uber. This is the thing. Well, can't you turn your location things off? Only, yes, only there, was a whole, the there was a whole scandal at Apple and Uber and tracking you when you were... Mm. Yeah, it's not like all these, these new things, these things that have happened in the last decade that you think, oh, they're amazing, you can get this really fast, really cheap, you can get food delivered by this guy, it's just an, it's amazing, get Wagamon in five minutes, and you, and you forget, because that's because somebody's getting paid absolutely yeah. peanuts, and, you know... And it's... cycling around the dark, the rain hand, with no lights. nobody's forcing them to do the job. They're choosing the job voluntarily. Not really. And most Uber, Uber drivers I've spoken to don't feel they have. I've spoken to numerous guys that they're, they seem to be living in some crowded house outside of London. We're becoming that sort of place where mm. people come in from the outside that are living in appalling conditions to support the. I think one of the problems with Uber drivers is that it started off, they were earning really good money. Mm. And then when the pandemic came along, the, the, the money dried No, they were never but earning it's, But it's good also... Money. They were, they were really like, work. I mean, the I know, I like... Uh, there's lo there were lots of drivers, like, you know, somebody who might be a painter decorator or something, and then that was he the used idea. to work for me and yeah. he became a driver. And do... only twice as much Yeah, money. and, do a, and do, they do a bit on the side and then they go, oh, yeah. I'm earning good money. The second this was job, Uber's the second strategy job situation. was to squeeze out the existing taxi drivers by making Uber the dominant thing, by making it really cheap to customers and yeah. decent income for mm. drivers and then once they'd squeezed out the other drivers they're like okay well good this is ours now we can start raising the fares and cutting the payments a story about another uh, former uber driver kim jong un <laughs> 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 who true? apparently has been hasn't been seen for a yeah. while and citizens are said to be very concerned about his health with millions of North Koreans worrying that he might actually be OK. Uh, Rona. Yeah, he's not been seen outside for a long time. His last event was uh, October. Oh. So he's clearly working from home. One of the few <laughs> men who decided not to <laughs> return. Go back to the, the office. office. I think maybe, I don't know, the, they've said this is the longest... Uh, the North Korean... How, the North Koreans have said this is the longest that he has never been seen. And the last time he was seen, he's lost a lot of weight. Oh. So, has he? Yeah, so How has he done that? They're not quite sure. Been on the paleo diet, been on yeah. the caveman diet. And now he's too weak to go outside. He's gone on the plant-based diet. Oh, that's and it. And yeah. his, his blood type is more tendency. To ten, tenden, tendency <laughs> to eat raw has a meat. tendency to benefit from the omega threes found in lamb. Wow! And he's omitted this from his diet, and now he's weakened. No, I'm making that <laughs> part up to show that I have some medical knowledge. Good, I was impressed. Dietary I knowledge. Zoned out for Talking about my own impressed. dietary yeah. needs. There, I'm not going on the plant-based diet. Yeah. I help liberate lesbians, but I'm not doing that. Because I like to eat meat. I've got a theory about diets. Would you like to know my theory yes. about diets? Yes, as long as I can. I think. Do a bit more oh, you, no, you do. No, you do your thing. I, no, I, I don't want to come over as somebody who hasn't learned all this stuff. No, no, you'd learn. You'd go on. Rubbish. Share your knowledge <laughs> with with the audience. I think what's happened here. But there's been many times where he's not been seen. There's been mm -hmm. speculation about this young, very overweight leader's health for a long time. He's okay. off on a jolly with Donald Trump. Well, I think that's, that's what happened. The last time he went out, it was with Donald Trump, and he's like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> it was really distressing. He dragged me over to that place. He wouldn't stop going on. Oh, I bet you'd have a great night with Donald Trump. He'd be yeah? a laugh, yeah. I'd really? rather go out for him with a night than Joe Biden. Well, yeah, yes. it could be that. It could and be like, if I come out, I'll why we're in Joe the Biden. mess we're in. <laughs> People are getting confused with the person you want to go out for a drink with to the person you want to be in charge of your country. Well, that is, that is a fair point. Although, would you want to go out with Joe Biden? No. I mean, he'd, he'd start well, being racist. If I get randomly, to go in that car. Go, the car, in the, you know, the oh, big in the car. Oh, in the motorcade, like the 85 yeah, car motorcade. Something to Maybe that's it. Do Maybe a he's. And put that, Maybe tell us your theory about diets. Maybe he I'm feels inadequate. I'm not going to tell you my theory about okay, diets because we've over talked and I'm being shouted at.
<laughs> in my ear. Um, so we're going to a story now in tomorrow's uh, Daily Mail about a woman being thrown out of Asda for being underdressed. Can you be underdressed in Asda? Anyway, it was filmed <laughs> and the clip has gone viral and here is uh. that clip. Right. Ah. No, because you are working with all, 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 almost clothes. We can see your body I'm, almost. I'm wearing what? Yeah. No problem. Right now, manager is coming, manager of store, my ship. This is what I'm wearing, by the way. What? Uh, I'm sorry. Mm. She's How, like, is I that got, like, underdressed? When I was in my mid-twenties, I wasn't allowed to board a British Airways flight for being drunk and not wearing enough clothes. I was wearing a lot less than that. What were you wearing? So, well, in those days... <laughs> A crop top up to here, which now I would be arrested under the Mental Health Act. And uh, just some... I, when I, I say they were cut-down shorts. shorts, but um, they were... So like you were, you were basically crop. in a bikini? Yeah. Trying to I'd, get on a plane? Yeah. And See, that, I think... But the, that's kind of reasonable. But she's like, she's got a T-shirt, she's got a... a, a what, a, a hoodie, a or something? Tell us, somebody needs to tell us Sorry, story. OK, so, yeah. she's 22, she's called Jaya, she's a student, she goes into the Asda store on the Isle of Dogs in London, uh, and then this employee comes up and says, no, no, you're, you're basically naked, we, we want you to leave the store. And she's like, what? This is ridiculous. Uh, and he calls the manager and uh, says she doesn't respect herself, and so she complains to... She doesn't respect herself? I know. I mean, well... Is this a... But as we saw, she... Like, I've got a, 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 an, an 18-year-old daughter. Yeah. Uh, actually, she's 19. And if she dressed like that girl was dressed... Yes. You'd be I would be relieved, <laughs> given how little she wears. I mean, you could out. say you don't respect yourself, you're shopping in Asda, but that's yeah. really not what he was well, driving at. Anyway, so Asda apologised, yeah. said, um, this is not our recognised policy, and we're really sorry for the service you received. But it is, it is kind of bizarre, because I have to say... I, I think any of us here have been into shops with more skin showing than that. I really don't understand this story. This, there feels like an element missing here. Is there perhaps this the yeah, person Yeah, what motivated it? There must be some... Her, had some beliefs that... that yeah, well, it might be religious. It might be... Maybe he was it. just using that as an excuse to have a go at her. Maybe they or knew each other previously. Or she's not downloaded the app. She's not downloaded yeah. the app, has she? Well, it's an app that says app. you can... Yeah, what, how you you're can, allowed to you dress. Can, oh, yeah, yeah. Or on any given day. I shudder at the word Asda because that was my teenage job. I was on the sauce yeah. and pickle. Did you, did you ever throw anybody out for being improperly dressed? No. I just felt it really unfair that I had to wear tights. OK, we've got two minutes to do the last story, which is in the <laughs> mail about getting teachers abused oh. on TikTok videos. <sighs> Tamandra, oh. Tamandra, what have you got for us? Well, uh, yeah, but it's, it's exactly what you said. So I'm just finding the beginning of the story here. So. Kids who go on TikTok and make videos. You, you know what TikTok is? It's I like, do know it's like YouTube used to be. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what it is. Okay, it's, well, you know, you had Super 8 cameras and used to make films of your teachers and, and project them in the mm -hmm. common. Yeah, it's like that, but on the internet, on your phone. Oh. So it's, it's kids filming teachers, making TikTok videos, mocking the teachers, sometimes accusing them of, uh, of being sex offenders. Uh, just <laughs> mocking, mocking them. So sometimes the posts are defamatory, offensive, homophobic. So the Association of School and College oh. Leaders have said, this is outrageous, something must be done. They've complained to TikTok. Uh, TikTok say, you know, we do take them down. But I'm... I mean, this is obviously horrible, and frankly, I don't know how anybody is a teacher these days. I oh have no God. idea. But it is, of course, being used to call for more controls on social media. Mm. And at the moment, with the online harms or safety or whatever they're calling it bill going through parliament every time there's something like this i'm like mm, yeah but what kind of law are we going to end up with here are you going to use this as a way of basically censoring the internet yes. to protect teachers from their can i say shitty from their shitty kids who are mocking them on the internet i wouldn't no, have you said can't so. say that and we okay, apologize I, i'd I like to retract that word OK, so we're coming to the end of the show now. It's been a pleasure. You were both exemplary all the way through, Pass. right up until it the last really sentence. And you let pleasure. yourselves down. Sorry. You let us... Me down, you let everyone I don't let us down. Oh, I don't know. No, you've both been, you've been absolutely glorious. It's been a pleasure having you both on. Rona Cameron and Tamandra Harkness. And uh, thank you very much to you, dear listener. Uh, dear listener, dear viewer, it's been a pleasure speaking what, to you. What, the two of them? What era are you, <laughs> you in? You always say that. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back with more tomorrow. <laughs>
You're watching GB News Live across the UK and the world on our digital stream. GB News is Britain's news channel. We are the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. We are here for you. Don't forget to join our YouTube community by clicking on that subscribe button. And if you want the GB News app, you can click and catch up on programmes anytime. We love to hear from you, so email us. GBviews at gbnews.uk. Thanks for being part of the GB News family. My name is Andrew Doyle.